So part two of the video, um, I had to cut it short, is we're now on the Renfrew Creamery Kings with LHX. Um, I deem him as NHL com uh, comparable would be the Boston Bruins. Um, same core, he's got uh, LeClaire, he's got Straka, he's got Shane Corson that's been around, he's got Yulanov, Zilavsky, he's got the core like Boston normally carries around. Um, but he's looking for that constant. He's looking for that constant that he has. He's got his LeClaire and Straka would be like his uh, Pasternak and Marchand. He's got his McCov um, McCall, uh, McAvey, uh, Paul, uh, what's it called, uh, Charlie McAvey would be a Zarley Zalapski. But with having his goaltender retire, he had to make a change. Uh, with this Tuka Rask, now he's got Jeremy Swayman, which is a younger goaltender, which like Ed Belfort was his Tuka Rask, now he's traded over to Richfield. But um, then we move over to Richfield. Richfield's team would be a comparable to the Edmonton Oilers. The Edmonton Oilers, all world talents. He's got Lemieux, he's got Danfus, he's got Dashin, he's got Bertuzzi, he's got comparable to McDavid, Drysdale, Kane. Um, what's another one that he played really well this year? Not Bozak, but uh, he came from Toronto. Um, and then uh, Hyman, Zach Hyman. Uh, and then the big Achilles heel, you got like Alexi Zitnik as well as his Darnell Nurse. And his big Nostradamus scripture reading is that he finally found out that his goaltending was his Achilles heel. Like Edmonton, figure it out. You, Mike Smith is not your issue. Change it. Richfield at least went out and changed that and went and got Ed Belfort, which is going to help him hopefully from being down beat by the diggity dog Sagathon. Uh, the next team we move over to is the Rome Auroras with Salvatonic. Seattle is comparable. He's got some good pieces to start off with. He's got Teppel Newman for a couple more good years. He's got Travis Green and Greg Johnson. They're going to be nice pieces to build around. John Van Breesbrook for a couple seasons. And we'll see how he transforms his team from there. Uh, Saguenay Aviatars with G-Lock. His NHL comparable would be the Vancouver Canucks. A young transitioning team looking for that star power. He's already got it in Brock Besser. They got it in Elias Pettersson. Um, they got some decent goaltending um, and some strong defense. Um, I forget who the good defenseman is in Vancouver. It's, it's like My mind is completely absent of what the rosters look like now. I'm thinking of creating the mod. But adding Pavel Burry is adding that, that spark plug that he needs. Now he's got so much speed to work around. And he's got his Besser. He's got his Elias Pettersson. He's got his JT Miller now. So he's got those top three dogs he can run with. And then he's got Ron Francis coming in that's going to help him as well. So he's got the pieces. He just needs maybe one more defenseman with some talent. And then he's going to be in a great position for the next four or five seasons to really make a push for the playoffs. Like Vancouver is, right on the cusp of making those playoffs. Then we move up through the Saskatchewan scam squanches. They're give her their bud. It's the way of the road. It's the way of the road. Sam, uh, the Saskatchewan Sam Squanches remind me of the Montreal Canadiens this past season. It's not that they're as bad as Montreal was. It's the fact that they have this huge core that they've had around for a while and decided to blow it up. Montreal's doing the same thing. Got rid of Shea Weber's contract for Ev Evgeny Dandanov. They're going to look to get rid of Jeff Petrie. They traded Arturi Lekin and they traded Ben Sherratt. They traded Tyler Toffoli. Picked up draft picks in the, in the process. Um, they're looking to maybe add some star power. Like, maybe Carey Price might be gone, but Chris Osgood's at least a stopgap for him for the moment. Uh, Adam Oates, you got your Cole Caulfield, you got your Nick Suzuki, which he adds in with kind of Osaku Koivu, Kolovanko. He's got like four or five strong forwards, which is really good for them. And then you add Paul Coffey in there, which replaces his Chris Pronger, but he only gets him for three years. But like Montreal only has one real defenseman. They got... Joel Edmondson, and he, but even at that, they got some young prospects coming in that are going to help them down the line. Uh, the Sonoma Valley, uh, Sonoma Valley Barrels with um, Nui, Nui Husky, his comparable team would be New Jersey. Uh, he's got the young studs. Eric Daze is his Nico Escher. Uh, he's got some decent goaltending in place now for this, for this upcoming season. He's got Keith Primo. The only weakness I would say Nui has right now is probably on defense, but over the next couple of seasons with Frederick Olison and Alexander Kapartsov, he can make a push. 
And I think Nui with his first season in the bag, he was a little underwhelming, but he'll he'll put it together. And everybody thought the same thing as New Jersey. They need to they need to come together. They need to figure something out and build up from there. Probably dump PK Subban's contract would be a huge a huge help. I wish the NHL was like the NFL. You could restructure that contract to kind of reduce the cap hit. But I guess there's something regarding the NHLPA that that's not allowed. Um, Sud, uh, Sudbury. Which was the Milwaukee Pucks, but we got the Sat the Sudbury Saturday Night Lives. Um, would be the New York Rangers. The only reason why I put the New York Rangers, the Sudbury was a hard team to pinpoint. If he had his season team from last year with the Sudbury Slag, it would be a little bit easier to point them to an actual NHL team. But the Rangers, they they have the star power. They got Panarin, they got um, Zabanajad, they got Lafreniere, they got Adam Fox, they got Sturkin. They, they got all the pieces there, but the thing is, the reason why is that not many people knew about the Rangers all that much. They saw them as a good team, but nothing really special. Uh, more of a hodgepodge, a lot of question marks. They had a few good players, but you add Greg Adams, you got Brian Bradley, you add Cliff Round into the mix now. Maybe after this offseason, we might be able to see Sudbury a little bit more developed than what they're going to be. But I'd say the New York Rangers. Is Sudbury is such a difficult, uh, um, Milwaukee, we'll keep it as Milwaukee at the moment, are such a hard team to play against, but when you finally do play them, you're like, you know what, there's, there's, there's flaws in their game, but the, masking it with some shitty players is only temporary. Once you get some more pieces in there, he's going to be very, very difficult to beat. Uh, the next team we move into, the Sugar Valley uh, Firebirds with Einstein. Um, I'd say the Chicago Blackhawks. Your ex Alexander Mogilny is your Patrick Kane. Then you add your Thomas Holstrom and Doug Waite, Jeff Cortnall, or your Taze, your DeBrinket. Your goal, your defense is a little bit shaky, and you have suspect goaltending. Like Chicago does, Corey Crawford retired. Um, you, I don't really even know who Chicago's goaltender is. But Chicago is the team that I'd say they're a team in transition. They're a team that are looking to make a move. And I think with Einstein, he needs to make a move in net. Because Bill Ranford's got one more year, and Stefan Fizet's got three, but they're no better than 65 overall. And... Einstein's biggest weakness is goaltending. Uh, the next thing we move into is the Sumter Trash. The Washington Redskins. I put the pink elephants with the Washington Redskins because if you look at Eric Lindros and how he dominates that team, it's the same way Ovechkin dominates the Capitals. When you talk about the Caps, you think about, you're like, oh, it's Ovechkin. That's his team. Yes, you got John Carlson on defense, which he has with Ed Jablonowski. Then you also think about Backstrom, but injury-prone players. He doesn't really have much else. Other than Ovechkin. I know Washington's stacked, but they have questions in net. They have questions in their secondary scoring. TJ Oshie's great, but Lars Eller's not going to push you along the way as well. And um, Tom Wilson's another one. He's a goon. He's your Mike Greer. There you go. Uh, Sunnyvale Shithawks, the LA Kings. Um, with McLean, I really do think that he's got a roster that's in transition. Uh, the LA Kings had Drew Doughty, but Drew Doughty's on the decline of his career. So is Gusarov. Um, Iserman and Sakic are your Dan Dano, your Dano and your Anzes Kopitar. Your Dustin Brown would probably fall more into your Peter Sakura realm. Um, but they're a team in transition as well because now they got some solid goaltending, which Jonathan Quick does for them. But uh, I would say Nikolai Happy Balloons more at the beginning when LA won the first cup with Quick. Is that part of his career? And then he kind of transitions along the way. But yeah, Sunnyvale, I would say, is the LA Kings. Uh, Surrey Hacks. I would give them the Columbus Blue Jackets, a young developing team, always on the rise. You can't really name anybody out of Columbus. If you can name some people out of Columbus, good good for you. I can name Zach Rinsky. They had the goaltender that passed away. Um, but Corpus Allo, I think, is their goaltender. But I don't really know their roster. But they got young talent. Bobby Holik is going to come into his own. John, Jeff O'Neill is going to come into his own. He's got a roster to make a move. And he's improving every year. So I got to give him credit with that. And he's got a good duo with Essence and uh, Lalim. He might pull out a double goaltending duty this season. Um, my, we move into my team, the Sydney Cyclones with Ultra Magnus, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yes, I got my Austin Matthews with Timo Solani. I got my Mitch Marner with Jonathan uh, Shane Doan. Marcus Naslin, who's recently acquired, is my new uh, Jonathan Taze. I got my Chris Pronger, who's my Morgan Riley. But I'm like the Toronto Maple Leafs. I cannot get out of the fucking first round. It's a pitiful that my team does that, but it is what it is. Uh, the Taipei Typhoons. Um, Taipei, I would compare them to the Pittsburgh Penguins. They, they have some great talent. Crosby's your Paul Korea at this moment. Uh, Peter Bunge is your Malkin. 
Pittsburgh with Tristan Jari. They're kind of suspect with Grant Fear, but that's the way it is. But they have that solid defense with Zubov and McKennis. This is your Chris Letang. I don't know of the other people that they have on defense, but I would say Taipei is like uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, Thunder Bay, Tampa Bay Lightning. Sean Bell with that team. The only thing I can put them as is that they have the star power. It doesn't really matter who he has in net, even though Vasilevsky is his goaltender. Sean Burke, it plays like Vasilevsky with Sean Bell. Point final. There's nothing more I can say about that. But you have your Kucherov with Alfredson. You have your Sullivan with Stamkos. And you got your Sandus Ogilis, who is your Victor Hedman. And you got some some key components that you can play around with as well. The Timmins team, uh, Timmins Terra Grades, uh, Seattle. They're an expansion team. We don't know what to expect from them right now. Troy City, I would say Buffalo, a team that has gone through enough transitions. And I know Troy um, with Aftershock, he talks about your mother's cunts, you cocksuckers, suck my dick, and everything else like that. But at the end of the day, his team is going to be suspect every season that he's going to play. But at least it's entertaining. Uh, Troy Hill with uh, Tickle Puss. I would say the Winnipeg Jets, big, heavy team, very physical, can p- outplay you. You got your, um, I forget who that big guy, uh, Logan Stanley would be his Adam Burt, the slow piece of mud. Uh, Blake Wheeler's your Keith Kachuk. Alexander Daig is your Alexander Dubois, or um, Pierre-Luc Dubois, my apologies. And then you got your Connor Hollaback, who's your Jonathan, uh, your Justin Thibault. He's got a solid team all around. He's going to be a perennial team for at least the next four or five seasons. But Winnipeg is that that team that just gets in the playoffs and can't just get on a run. To Yuckatuck, the Detroit Red Red Wings. He's a team on the rise. He's got strong goaltending. Um, Detroit's got some goaltending in place. His Larry Murphy is his, um, who is it, Uh, Moritz Sider. And he's got his Steve Thomas and Steve Ruchin, which would, could be his Mason Raymond, and uh, maybe his Tyler Bertuzzi. But he's going to be a team to be dangerous in the next coming seasons. But at the same time, too, uh, the team's still on the rise. And then you got Ekiel with the Vancouver uh, Dumpstars. I would say the Ottawa Senators, a young team with a lot of talent. Uh, a couple more seasons of seasoning, and then they're going to be right in the prime picking of the of their division. They might make a run with Tiyakutuk to be able to take over the top divisions um, in their divisions, not the top divisions, but move out of tier four into tier three. They have the potential, both of them, to get into that category. Uh, so that is the, this week's video. I'm your host, Ultra Magnus. Play your games. I'm excited for tonight's game between Autobahn and uh, Colin for the Autobahn Autobahns and Milwaukee Half Pucked. And then we have the Segathon TB or Thunder Bay matchup, and then we're on to the Bruley. Uh, until next week, I'm your host, Ultra Magnus. Take care.